kept his hat. You know, the Jews wear hats in synagogue when they go. And a Catholic kid would automatically remove his hat. There would be no question about it. It wasn't like, you know, it's even more automatic than in this country when they stay play the Star Spangled Banner. I mean, you just would never wear a hat in a church, right? Some of you know that better than I do. So, bottom line is, immediately there was a buzz in the crowd like, he must be Jewish. And the people started putting two and two together, realizing that we were new kids to this family. So this lady, and if you harbor Jews at that time, you would be killed. If you protected Jews, you'd immediately, the whole family would be killed. So she panicked, got very nervous about this, got word to my mother to come and pick us up. And we, so she came, my mother came. She was very worried about Krakow. We li she lived in Warsaw, we lived in Krakow. That's a fairly good distance in those days. On the map this much, it's probably like a 10 hour train ride in those days. So she was very worried about taking my brother and I together on this train. So she decided to take him and leave me. And so these people that were, I lived with, this family, decided to hide me. So hid, they hid me in an attic. <coughs> And many, many days they forgot that I was there, they forgot to feed me. I would go out at night and uh, through a window in the attic, find some apples, I would find some raw eggs to eat. Yes, raw eggs, see, and I'm still alive. <laughs> Maybe that's why I have hair, it's raw eggs, who knows? But anyway, a lot of crap I ate, I might just put it that way. I went to the, where the pigs were and ate what they left over just to survive, and I was in that attic for about 10 weeks, two and a half months. When my mother came to get me, she said the lice were just jumping out of me. Don't forget, I didn't bathe for 10 weeks, didn't brush my teeth, didn't change clothes, didn't do anything. I was just there for 10 weeks. And I always thought this attic was very large. Here again, when my mother and I went back to Poland 15 years ago, we somehow found this house, and I asked, told the people the story that lived there. It wasn't the same people anymore. And I said, I'd love to see the attic. They said, of course, come on in. They were very friendly. They served us tea and crumpets, as they say. And we, so I went up to the attic. The attic was so small, I couldn't believe it. I guess when you're a kid, you think everything is large. I could not believe that I actually spent 10 weeks in that attic without ever leaving. Anyway, my mother bathed me cleaned me up, took me back to Warsaw, where we were living. Now it was getting close to the end of the war, almost. We heard the Russians. You know, the Russians were coming. We heard them. We could hear the, the uh, artillery. And we lived outside of Warsaw. So my mother got very nervous about it because there were all kinds of stories about the Russians being very barbaric. You know, when they came into a house, and it was true stories, incidentally. They would rape the women. They would steal everything. They would just, you know, they was like, in many ways, like animals at that time. Because they, you know, they, they had nothing. They were fighting that war, that front, for months and months and months. And I guess it's years and years. So she decided to hide. It would be better for us to go to Warsaw, into the city, the big city. So we went into Warsaw. And the Polish underground, does everybody know what underground means? Like the Poles that escaped and the Jews that escaped to, in the forest. A great movie about this is called The, uh, the, the what's it called? Defiance. Defiance. Defiance, right? Okay, Defiance. How the Jewish uh, people went into forest and fought the Germans that way. Well, in this case, it was Jews and Poles mixed up. And they decided since they heard the Russians were coming, that they would capture their capital. They wanted to capture Warsaw. Now, don't confuse this uprising with the ghetto uprising. Nothing to do with it. The ghetto fire and the ghetto, Warsaw ghetto, happened in 43. This happened in late 44. And it had nothing to do with Jews. This was simply the Poles wanting to take their capital, city, 
before the Russians took it to show their strength. Well, the Russians stopped. A great movie that shows this, incidentally, is The Pianist. If you've seen that movie, the guy's playing the piano, and the Russians, they even say the Russians across the river just stopped, didn't come in. Because the Russians already wanted the Germans to kill off this, this Polish uprising, because they already had ideas about keeping Poland, which they did for many, many years. So they stopped and didn't come in. Well, this went on, uprising went on for about two months. Finally, the Germans captured us and ship took everybody to the train station, trains to Auschwitz. Well, my mother again, this is a little bit of her courage and her smarts. Uh, and here's a case where being Jewish saved our lives. We were Jews, so we knew what le where, where we were being sent. Gentiles didn't know. They were told they were being sent to work. They believed the Germans. Jews knew that in concentration camps, there were mass murders. There were everybody was being killed. So we knew this. My mother and my stepfather knew this. So my mother waited at the train station until she finally saw a car. And you know, these cars were like cattle cars. You've seen enough movies to know that. But there was one that was open on top. I don't know if that was the only one, but there was one that was open. So she said, we rushed towards that one. The train that was open on top. And sure enough, saved us again, because the train stops about 100 yards from Auschwitz. We have no idea why, we could care less, but it stopped. So since I was the smallest one, my stepfather lifted me up over the opening, over the open, and somehow I was able to open the door. Evidently, it must have been easy, because I was only nine years old. I wasn't any he-man at that time. So I was able to open the door, we ran out. In fact, my stepfather and my mother kept yelling at the people, go, go, they wouldn't leave. They didn't even run away from the train. They all went to Auschwitz, and who knows what happened. It's obvious. So we ran into a farmhouse and hid there and waited. About two months later, the Russians came and liberated us. So we were liberated in like early 45 by the Russians who were on their way to Berlin. We were somewhere in here. The Russians were, of course, coming this way towards Berlin. Berlin is right here. And they were in a big hurry. You know, they wanted to get to Berlin first before the Americans came, got to Berlin. And they did manage to do that. Okay, I'm going to stop right now and catch my breath. That was the end of the war, and we were liberated. So I'd like to see who would like to answer, ask any questions. Uh, you said your step, your, your mother and your stepfather were separated. How did they get back together when you left? Uh, no, in the ghetto they met. From then on, they were not separated. Oh, they weren't. Oh, no. Okay. No, we were basically together. They were together. The only ones that separated were my brother and I when we were put on that farm. Otherwise, we were kind of a family of four through the whole war. And so he was also working outside the ghetto. No, he was, he was, yes, he was not working, he was, he was from that city. So he had great connections in the city. Even though he was Jewish, he had great connections with the Gentile world. And he was able to, he was the one that actually found out that the ghetto was going to be eliminated. The Germans wanted him, just to tell you the full story, the Germans wanted him to be an inside spy, a Jewish spy inside the ghetto and tell him what was going on. And he told him, well, he'll do it, but he has to think about it. Because, you know, he couldn't say no. If he says no, they would have killed him on the spot. So that's when he came back and told my mother, I guess at that point they were not married, his girlfriend, if you will. And that's when we, she, we planned that escape, or they planned the escape. Yes, sir. And why did the, the Germans kill the Gentile Polish people? When? No, why? 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 Because, number one, <clears throat> they killed the Polish intelligentsia, which means the intelligent Poles. They didn't want the Poles to, to rebel against them. So anybody that was like a mayor of a city, he was a goner. 
on all his cities in Poland. 